Although you have lots of options for digitizing your old photos, one of the quickest options is the Epson Fast Photo 680W high speed scanning system, which not only scans as fast as one photo per second, but also scans the front and the back of the photo at the same time. Scanning photos with a flatbed scanner is a very manual and time consuming process. However, with an auto feed scanner, you can scan an entire album of photos in a matter of minutes. Now, any scanning system is going to have its pros and cons, and we'll talk about those in this video. But first, let me walk you through the exact steps and settings that I use to scan 68 albums consisting of nearly 7,000 family photos. Let's have a look. Step one is to take your photos out of the album, and this, along with putting the photos back into the album, is the most time-consuming part of the entire process. To be consistent, start by taking the last picture out of the album and placing it face up on the table, and continue this until you have a full stack of photos. Take about an inch of photos off the bottom and load them into the scanner face up. In the Epson Fast Photo software, which is compatible with Mac and Windows, click on settings in the upper right corner and choose your photo type. As a side note here, I scanned all of my photos as JPEG at 600 dots per inch resolution, as I did not see a noticeable difference in quality between that and 1200 dots per inch, and as an added bonus, this only uses half as much storage space. I also chose to scan the backs of my photos because many of them had useful information written on them such as dates and locations. Next, in the upper left corner, click on start scanning, and if you have the date information, feel free to fill that in. I personally went with an alphabetic naming convention where the first album that I scanned was called AA, the second AB, the third AC, and so on. In this case, I was scanning my 20th album, which I called AT, and so every image file name started with A, T, underscore, and then the chronological number. Finally, click on start scanning to begin scanning the batch. It will take approximately a few minutes for the photos to scan depending on the quality that you choose, and when it finishes, if you still have more photos in the album to scan, load them into the scanner and click on scan next batch. Repeat this process until you scan every single photo in the entire album, at which point you can click on done scanning. At this point, the photos are safely saved on your computer and will be loaded into the Epson Fast Photo software where you can preview them. Feel free to go through and rotate them. However, if you choose to upload your photos to Google Photos like I did, Google will process your photos, suggest rotations, and auto-rotate your photos for you. Another awesome benefit of uploading your photos to Google Photos is to take advantage of its facial recognition capability. Google Photos will automatically identify and group similar faces. This allows you to search for and view all of the photos of a particular person, and it's surprising how accurate this facial recognition technology is, which was even able to recognize me as a child. Anyway, back to the tutorial here. At this point, you'll want to put your photos back into the album, and I recommend labeling each album so that you can easily determine the source of the scanned photos in the future if need be. Now, like I mentioned, there are a few drawbacks to the Epson Fast Photo 680W. The first is the $600 price tag, which isn't exactly cheap. But when we compare this to a local or a mail-in photo scanning service where prices range anywhere from 25 cents to $1 per photo, I would have ended up spending over $1,500 to scan all of my family photos. Another downside I noticed was that every few hundred photos or so, I would start to see a vertical line appear on my digitized photos. I quickly found out that this was due to dust and debris collecting on the scanning glass. To combat this, I simply had to take a microfiber cloth and periodically clean the scanner to ensure that this did not happen. And one last downside to the Epson scanner is the fact that it cannot handle really small photos. Because of the fact that it's an auto feed scanner, wallet size photos would frequently get stuck in the feeder and end up looking something like this. So after about a week of dedicating a few hours to photo scanning each day, I ended up with 6,659 digitized photos, which is equal to 44 gigabytes of storage space, and this is enough to fill up 10 DVDs. If you have any questions about this whole process, let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this from me in the future, and if you do, I'll see you in the next one.